Designer shoes that get elevated to iconic status are surely comfortable enough to wear if people keep going on about them, right? False. I mean, when you spend a lot of money, you get quality and comfort innovations, right? False. Well, that's all up in the air. One thing's for certain, and that is that when you spend a lot of money on designer shoes, then you absolutely earn the right to have a whinge about them. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I have six iconic designer shoes that I have in my collection, and I'm going to talk through price, design, whether I think that they're still popular today, and then I'm going to rate them in terms of how comfortable they actually are. Now, my comfort rating is going to be on a scale of one to 10. 10 being super comfortable, can walk a mile in them, think sneakers and Birkenstocks and footwear of that variety and one on that scale would be like that feeling when you put your foot into a shoe and you know that it's just going to be absolutely punished in it like it's not even comfortable when you're just trying it on sitting down none of the shoes in my collection are a one because they wouldn't be in my collection if they were but you know what I mean you know when you try something on and you know that it's just going to be absolutely terrible and so I've got six pairs to put through the ringer and so let's get started Some of the shoes that I have in my collection I've had for over eight years, and some of these boxes I haven't even opened for the past few years, and so I'm hoping there are no nasty surprises, but I have stored the shoes in their boxes quite carefully out of direct sunlight. The first pair that I wanted to talk you through are the iconic Valentino Rock Studs. This is a pair that I've had in my collection for over eight years. The box is looking a little tired but I mean I'm still pretty happy that it's in pretty good nick. Still got all the stickers as well from when I bought it. I bought this off Farfetch I'm pretty sure. Going to be, and these and were actually going to be my wedding shoes which I didn't end up wearing on my wedding day. I wore these for my bridal shower. I've got my wedding shoes here that I will talk you through. Meanwhile I've just opened the box and it's just you know it's still all <laughs> as you would expect when you have expensive things and you're trying to store them nicely. Still got all of the heel tips in there. Yeah, let's reveal. No nasty surprises. Everything is still intact. And so I have the um, kitten heel version of the rock stud in the blue grey colour in a size 37. Now the soles are quite indicative of the fact that I did wear these quite a bit and there is a little bit of scuffing on the heel. But all in all, I think they're in pretty good nick. I mean, they're eight years old, so no complaints there. Now the price of these shoes does vary between all of the retailers and so it does pay to shop around. Like for example, Netaporter have these for $16.99 Australian dollars, whereas My Teresa have them for $1,400. Farfetch have them for about $1,200. I remember shopping around for these and I ended up buying them on Farfetch. I think I bought them for roughly $700 Australian dollars at the time. I didn't have to pay the tax, the European tax, and I had a discount code or something. It was eight years ago, I can't remember, but it ended up being quite a reasonable price, a lot more reasonable than going and buying them locally from David Jones, because I do remember they had them in store at David Jones for over a thousand dollars. These are in a bluey grey colour, which I thought would be perfect as my element of something blue as part of like that wedding formula. I ended up wearing another pair of shoes anyway, but I did wear these for my bridal shower. The kitten heel is a really walkable six and a half centimetre heel, and despite them looking quite aggressive with all of the studs. These are surprisingly quite comfortable shoes which I will share in my comfort rating at the end of this portion. Now do I still think these are popular now? Look I think that they are so iconic that the answer to that would be yes and I have seen them around I just haven't seen them around as much as I used to. And Valentino have since come out with different iterations of the rock stud shoe. Like there's a more matte rock stud that is less metallic, so it blends in a little bit more. It's a bit more minimal in its look, even though the shoe is quite maximalist in its design. And there's also a version of the rock stud that is quite big too, bigger studs as opposed to smaller studs like this one. Now let's rate these on my very technical comfort scale, shall we? Now I would rate these probably a six and a half out of 10. It's pretty high, right? Put it this way, I can last an entire event in these. My ankle is supported, the straps are adjustable, the heel isn't a ridiculous height and so I can walk in them. I mean, they're not that bad. They're actually pretty comfortable when it comes to heels. It's really nice to see you again. The next pair of iconic designer shoes are ones that are newer to my collection and they are in this box here. My Manolo Blahnik Me Saint Mules. Now these ones I have in the black suede and I have these in the kitten heel 
which is roughly five centimeters in height and I have them in a size 37. Now judging from the soles as you can see they haven't really been worn that much but also another explanation could be that when I have worn them I haven't really moved around much in them but more on that later. Just done a quick Google search and I can see that these retail for anywhere between 1200 Australian dollars to roughly 1400 Australian dollars which is a little bit baffling to me because I bought them last year in February so only 13 months ago and I bought them for 850 Australian dollars you know from Netaporter not from some weird like dark web website and so I'm gonna have another search and see if I can find more reasonably priced May sale mules to add in the description section below because I would have never bought these for 1200 I think that's a threshold in my head that I just can't pass. Now I've got a dedicated video about these shoes. I filmed a dedicated try on and my first impressions when I first received these last year. And these also featured in my best and worst purchases of 2022 in the worst category because of the comfort reasons, which I will now go into because that is probably the key thing about these shoes. Now, before I get into comfort though, do I think that they're still popular and do I think that they're beautiful? And my answer is absolutely yes. I think that they are up there with one of the most good looking, gorgeous shoes that I've ever owned. I think that they're beautiful. I love their minimal design, but in deploying the very technical comfort rating system that I have created, I would score these guys a four out of 10. And it pains me to say that, but it is just because there is just such lack of support for the shoes. I mean, there's not much going up here in the toe box and there's nothing going on at the back. I think what I should have done instead is I should have considered the Maisleys, which is the slingback version of the style, but I just really loved the look of the mule. And I have worn them to various events. I just haven't, you know, walked very far in them or needed to go very far. This is the type of shoe that just looks lovely when you're just standing in the one spot or just sitting because they're just a really dainty, lovely feminine shoe. But walking around in these, you really need to grip your toes like no tomorrow. Otherwise, the shoes make a really clappy noise as they slap against your feet because obviously they're not really being kept onto your feet. It's similar to the sound that you make when you're wearing a pair of like rubber thongs and it's like slapping against your foot. Oh, sorry, flip flops for those of you that aren't in Australia and New Zealand. I realise that thong has a different meaning for you guys everywhere else. I'm not suggesting that's a sound that you make when you're walking around in a G-string. <laughs> So there you go, an iconic designer shoe that looks beautiful, not very comfortable. Next iconic shoe that we have to talk about are my Gucci loafers. This is actually the only pair of designer shoes in this little roundup that I don't store in the box because I reach for these so often that they live on a shoe rack just in my wardrobe. So the box just lives out of direct sunlight in my cupboard because I love hanging on to these things. Also, it seems a little bit wrong to throw out the box of something that you spent so much money on. I don't know, just can't bring myself to do it. And so, yes, here we have the iconic Gucci Jordan loafers, which I also have a dedicated video about. That video is about how I enjoy styling my Gucci loafers. I bought these in October 2021 and I bought them off Net-A-Porter. It was like on a whim on a Sunday morning, I remember. I remember posting about how much I love them and these have been on my wish list for ages and then I just did it. I think a few of you messaged and were like, they're amazing. They have been like my best shoes ever. And I just went, okay, just do it. And I did. I remember them being roughly 900 and 80 Australian dollars, something along those lines. Since then, I know that they have been subject to many price increases. I have these in a size 36 and a half, and I have also had a Vibram sole put on the shoe because the original leather sole is very slippery. And so I did that very quickly after buying these shoes just so that I could preserve them. The shoes are so iconic. Do I still think that they're relevant and popular? absolutely freaking yes 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 i think that they are such amazing shoes and they're so beautiful i see myself wearing these for the rest of my life and as you can see they're in very well loved condition i wear these constantly all the time to work and on weekends i just think that they are such a wonderful shoe and the perfect chameleon shoe that can be styled in dressier looks as well as more casual looks comfort rating out of 10 I would give these guys an eight and a half out of 10. I mean, obviously they're not as comfortable as sneakers and Birkenstocks, but they're pretty damn comfortable. They're flats, they keep your foot secure, they keep my feet very happy. And so yes, they are a very comfortable 
design a shoe, very contrary to other examples that I have shared and will share. The next pair of iconic shoes that I wanted to talk you through, I've actually got two pairs of, and this is a Starlet debut back in 2004. So this is the box here, so the first pair that I have, and this is the box of the second pair, which signals the change of the label. It is the YSL Tribute Platform Sandals. And I have these in the burgundy. And I also have them in nude color. So these are my tribute sandals. And I've got the style in the lower heel height that it comes in. And so it's a 10 centimeter heel with a three centimeter platform. Whereas there's a high version that's got like a 12 centimeter heel with a three centimeter platform. And so rather than the pitch of the shoe being like a 10 centimeter heel, because of the platform, the pitch of the heel is only about seven centimeters, which makes it as comfortable as a mid heel, which is why I really loved wearing these shoes so much. The first pair that I bought were this burgundy pair and I bought these roughly 13 years ago. I bought them off Farfetch when Farfetch was still not as well known. I remember I bought these for roughly 550 to 600 Australian dollars, which at the time on my graduate salary was a huge deal. I think nowadays these guys retail for 1200 or what do they retail? No, 1500. Sorry guys. Yeah. So they've gone up in price. Obviously all designer shoes have just been part of all of the price increases. And these were my go-to event shoes. Every really dressy occasion, such as weddings or engagement parties, I would whip out these shoes and they were just the best. They're the best. I really, really like them. Now the second pair that I have here in a nude color, this is now looking a little bit yellowy. It has discolored since I bought them. I don't know what it is about the leather, but as you can see, the patent looks somewhat mustardy, whereas inside the leather is actually a little bit more beigey tan. That's actually the original color that they were, but for some reason, they have just discolored. I don't know whether you can see here, there's a little bit of yellowing here. I can't explain it. It's really quite disappointing. These were the shoes that I ended up wearing on my wedding day. These were my wedding shoes. And so they hold a lot of sentimental value. And I bought them obviously because the style was a tried and true style for me. I initially did buy the Valentino Rock Studs to wear on my wedding day, but they only have a six and a half centimeter heel and I wanted that additional height. And so I ended up going and buying these ones. These have a 10 centimeter heel, as I've mentioned earlier. They were great. They were great for the entire day. And I've wore them a few times since, but I still gravitate towards the burgundy version of the shoe just because I surprisingly find these to be really easy to match. I look at these and they're very sentimental because it was such a lovely day, but I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed at the fact that they have somewhat discolored. The patent leather has done something funky and so I can't explain it. I don't know whether it can be fixed, but because they were my wedding shoes, I will hang on to them. I don't even think that they are sellable anyway because of the discoloration. Comfort wise, which is what you're all here for, I would give these guys a, a 7 out of 10, which I think is pretty good for a pair of heels that gives you 10 centimeters worth of height. The ankle strap provides that support. The toe box isn't too squishy, but it's that platform. Having the platform means the pitch is a lot lower, and so you're not feeling like you're walking around on extremely high shoes. I appreciate they look pretty intimidating, but they are surprisingly not. If you do stumble across a pair of tribute sandals in your travels, then you should definitely give them a go and try them on just to see what I'm talking about. Do I still think that they're relevant and popular today? I mean, obviously not as much as they were 10 years ago where they were at the height of their popularity, but I think that the more popular version with this style are the sandals or the flats, which seem to be like a great alternative to the Hermes Oran sandals. But I think that the heeled version of the Tribute sandals are not as popular. But I would still wear my baby shoes for sure. The next pair of iconic designer shoes that I wanted to talk you through are the pair inside this box here, which I think speaks for itself. Let me just pull them out of their box. The iconic red dust bag. I have the Christian Louboutin Simple Pumps with the rounded toe 
and the 80 centimeter stiletto heel. Now this is the second pair of Louboutins that I bought. I bought these to replace my first pair, which I ended up selling because they were so unbelievably uncomfortable. I bought a pair of the calf leather simple pumps in the 100 millimeter height in a size 37. I remember they were just they were insanely uncomfortable. They were like a two on the comfort scale. Not quite punishing as a one, but even wearing them sitting down was uncomfortable. I bought those, I remember, for my admission ceremony. And I also remember I wore them to my graduation ceremony. Or maybe I thought against it. I can't remember actually. But yeah, that was my first pair. And then I bought these subsequently in a more sensible heel height, I thought, the 80 centimeter heel. And I sized up half a size thinking that that would fix the narrow footbed problem, the toe box problem. Christian Louboutin shoes are so beautiful and simplistic in their look and their design. But in terms of comfort, what would I give these? I'd give these probably a two and a half out of ten. They were an improvement by 0.5. I guess an improvement's an improvement and I should recognise that. There's so many things that go to the fact that they are so uncomfortable. I mean, first off, they are just too narrow in the toe box. Sizing up half a size didn't really fix that problem. And I know that that's not a me problem, that's a shoe problem. But I think I just kept putting it on me and that was something that I just needed to deal with because I had spent so much of my hard-earned money on a pair of shoes that I was determined would just make me look like I was more of a complete person but I just would not recommend them. Do I still think that they're popular today? I mean, there are still all these boutiques around, right? I mean, I'm not walking in them. I do see that people are in them, but personally, I don't see many people wearing Louboutins. I don't see it as much as I used to. And I think that probably boils down to the fact that they're not as popular as they were. There are so many heels that are just as beautiful and simplistic in their design that are just so much more comfortable, guys, and you don't have to spend your hard-earned money on shoes that just make you miserable when you are getting from A to B. I will say that there is something really satisfying about looking back at my admission photos and seeing a pair of Louboutins on my feet. Like it was such a big milestone and I remember it was such a big deal in my head that I wanted to buy a pair of really expensive shoes. I remember that was a thing that I was going to do after I finished uni and started a proper job. Yeah, I have had it on my to-do list to sell these. Uh, I haven't seen these in a while. They've been living at the back of my wardrobe. I have worn these a lot though. I mean, as you can see from the soles of the shoes, but also the stiletto heel tip has zero scratches. I mean, how did I manage that? Pretty proud of myself for that. So yeah, I'll probably list these and I'll probably sell them in the near future. But I do think that Christian Louboutin shoes for all of the beauty that they give. I mean, they were designed by a man who never had to wear them. They are so, so. And the last pair of shoes that I wanted to share as part of this iconic designer shoe roundup, they are a pair of shoes that I managed to snap secondhand and they are the Christian Dior Jadior Slingbacks. After my Gucci loafers, they are my second most worn pair of designer shoes. I wear these all the time. I think that they are so easy to style and they're such a beautiful shoe. They're sort of like a statement minimal shoe in the sense that the colour palette is just so simple, but there is the branding and it's just iconic with the slingback design. The heel is a really sensible six and a half centimetre heel and it's got this really lovely comma heel design which looks a lot more different to your traditional stiletto heel. These retail now for roughly 1490 Australian dollars so very much on par with all of the other designer shoes that I've shared. I think in terms of all of the other heels that I own these are my favourite and I would absolutely pay full price for them if something were to happen to these. In terms of how comfortable they are on my very technical comfort rating scale I would score these a 7 out of 10. Similar to my other comfortable heels I'm able to last the entire event in these. I can walk in these and they're very comfortable. I find that the slingback on these is really quite comfortable as well. I know that a lot of people are shy to try these because they're worried that the slingback digs in whereas I find that because of the thickness of the slingback Back, it's actually quite supportive and I don't think that it rubs against my ankle at all. I think that it's actually a very comfortable part of the shoe. I like that it's a slingback as well because it just means that my foot is just not as enclosed, it's not as tight, it's just a lot happier. So yeah, there's a lot to say about these shoes and I think that I have featured them enough 
on my Instagram and my blog for you to realize that I really do love these shoes. I always get asked questions about these as well. Do I think they're worth it? Absolutely. Would I buy them again full price? Absolutely. If something were to happen to these, yes, I would replace these in a heartbeat. I think that they are just such a beautiful shoe. That's me spilling the beans on the iconic designer shoes in my collection and how comfortable they really are. If you had any questions, then pop them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But otherwise, if you like this video, then hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more of me, you know what to do, guys. Subscribe, follow me over on Instagram. I upload videos once a week. And so I will see you guys next week for a new video. Until then, have a great week. Bye.